Hello everybody, my name is Alan, I'm from Sauber Lab and today will be another video about TrueNAS scale. This video will be part 6 where we're gonna look a little bit more about R-Sync. And then you're gonna ask, Alan, you already show how to configure R-Sync, why you gonna show again? And I will say, uh, in the previous video, I show how you can configure R-Sync between two servers that it has installed TrueNAS. But not necessarily this option will be the best or fit for your budget. Because to run TrueNAS, you need to have a little bit more powerful computer. And sometimes you want to make a backup system really simple. Have a lot of hard drives that make it safe, but with low quantity of run memory and low power or CPU power. Therefore, you can do it, but you cannot do with uh, TrueNAS and TrueNAS. The option that we're gonna look will be the OpenMediaVal. OpenMediaVal you can install either in Raspberry Pi up to any computer that you want. So if you have a quite old computer and you want to make that computer as a backup and the newest computer using TrueNAS, you can do it and in this video we're gonna show it. Therefore, you can configure it for your server, backup server to turn on in certain times and after this time they will turn off and keep off until the next time that your computer wants to sync. So, if you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're gonna show in this video, but first of all, don't forget to leave your like, consider to subscribe for the channel, and let's understand a little bit more about it. Just after finishing to record the video, about how to do our sync between TrueNAS and TrueNAS, I realized not everyone wants to have two servers TrueNAS running only to make a clone or a backup. Sometimes you want to have a really strong computer, really powerful, and the second computer, really bad one or a really simple old, either Raspberry Pi. And therefore, I was thinking, not all the system run TrueNAS. In this way, OpenJaval will work really well with most of computers or systems that you want to run. So if you have a Raspberry Pi, you can run OpenMediaVal. If you have an old computer, a new computer, or anything that you would like, OpenMediaVal will run really well. So in this way, I decided to make another video about our sync, but focus for the OpenMediaVal. Before we start to explain how I do this configuration, let's go to the basics. This is my system. This is the first system that I'm using, that is the TrueNAS, and uh, this TrueNAS will be the TrueNAS scale 22.02.4, where they have 16 gigabytes of RAM memory and four core. Remember that I told that TrueNAS uses a lot of RAM memory. If I look here, it's almost four gigabytes of RAM memory running without having any proper application installed, without having so much storage, or without having so many things configured. Once that they start configuring more and more, the quantum of run memory will be used more and more. This reason that the TrueNAS require a better system or a more strong one at least. Here as well, I have my storage where I have a few four folders and the one that we're gonna look, the file system or the data set, will be the data. In this way, we already have 176 megabytes of data there. And then we come here in data protection and we create the R-Sync. No, we cannot do it. Because at the moment we don't have any module installed or any module configured in our OpenMediaVal. In this way, if you try to configure our sync directly in the other system and don't have any configuration there, they will not connect. Maybe my port or my R sync is not open or configured. Maybe I didn't create my model. Maybe I'm not using the correct module. Maybe I'm doing a lot of things wrong so the R sync will not work. This way, it's not worth only to put add. First, let's configure the other server to accept this information and configure it for they have all the information that you want. In this way, we open our OpenMediaVal. First, we're gonna do the login. This is my OpenMediaVal. This OpenMediaVal have around uh, three gigabytes of RAM memory and they are using only 351 for my system and 262, so not so much RAM memory. I have uh, two hard drives and I have no utilization of my CPU. That's great. Other thing that I have configured is two services where I have SMB and the SSH. So if you come here in users and users, 
have one user called Cyberlab where it's already created and have access for few folders. Other thing that's important, we will come in storage. If I come here in file system, I have two hard drives. The first one with 16 gigabytes and second one with 16 gigabytes. Will be more clear if you open the disk, we have uh, three hard drives, let's say. Two of those is 16 gigabytes, one of those is uh, 8 gigabyte. This 8 one, they're using for US and the remaining ones I'm using for my data. In this way, makes sense when I come here in my share folder and have data one, and data two or data and data two. In this way, we have a nomination for each hard drive. So now we're gonna start to configure our rsync. For it, we're gonna come in service, rsync, and task. Before we start to configure anything else, we're gonna understand why task not fit for us. Because task is exactly the same thing that we was doing with my TrueNAS. I'm configuring to collect information. If I want to do the true NAS to collect that information, here will be the perfect option to be able to collect it. But in our case, we want that uh, true NAS send the information for the server. So we come here in our service, click, um, click in settings, and now we need to configure it, this service. Here now we can activate it, enable, and we can save. One thing that's really important, don't open this port 873. This port 873 means that uh, my rsync is open for the everyone to access it. And if they know the name of the module, they potentially can make a pool and collect all the information. So don't do it unless you have a reason. Some people will say that they want to have a share information for the public, then they will have a reason. Otherwise, if you want your private information to be safe, don't open this port. Now, before we come here and apply it, we come here in modules. Here in modules, we can add a new module, so we can put create, and here what we need to configure. It. First thing, we need to define where they will save this data. So in my case, I have my data, but I potentially could create a new share folder called backup, and that's all the data will be in that backup. But in my case, because I'm only using this system for this rsync, so data will work quite well. Here's the name of the model. So if I come here, here's the name of the model so I can set up as a backup. Who has access? Nobody and user como as a group. So now I can add some specific user to have access for it. But in my case, I already have a user and want that, that user specific have a look on it. And because I'm using my true NAS every morning or every the specific hours they will turn off and it will open again a few minutes before midnight and that's a turn off after two three hours average of usage of course if you think that you have too much data you can leave until six o'clock eight o'clock but two three hours should be fine depending how much data that you want to sync now that uh, we define the user or didn't define at least the user we can come here and ask for authentication for the users. If you do it, you need to allow a prompt to get the password. What we're not gonna do because this system will work only local on my network and I don't have reason to do it. Also, I have the option to put here only to read, so only to pull the information, not to push. Here will be only to push, not to pull. And here is the list mode. So they will create a list of all the information before they start to push all the information for the other server. In this way, you are sure that all that data it's, uh, will be copied correctly and in the shortest time. So now we can make any other configuration, but for me it's totally fine because I don't want to restrict a specific server or restrict a specific information or allow the only specific server. I want to be free and open for all my network. So now I can put save and I can apply it. Once that my system is applied and I have my model, I can go back for my true NAS and start to configure it. Now is the time that we can properly configure the rsync. So we put add and we select the path that we want. In my case, the path that I want will be data, remote. I will put the user that I have. In my case, the user that I'm using will be Cyberlab, so we'll copy here at and the IP address that I'm using 192.168.1.123. Let's see if it's exactly the same, 123. And now the model, 
Remember, you have the SSH or module. In our case, we'll look as a module. Now we come here back and we select as a service, rsync service module. And you know that this name of the module will be backup. So I copy this information, come here and paste this information. Now I can select the user. Remember, this user needed to have access for the folder data. So the best option put root or any user that have access this, for this folder data. Traction is the time that you want to define for push or pull. In my case, I will need to push because I don't have any data there in this server. So if I put pull nothing, they will not pull anything. Description, I don't need to put anything. And now the schedule. His schedule is defined how often you want to do it. One hour, it's, I think that's too much. Once a day will be okay, but depending what your needs, you need to put to follow it. So if you need to sync every hour, you can sync every hour. If you need to sync every day, you can sync every day and continue on. Also, you can select some specific options. You can archive, you can delete, you can quiet. In my case, I will leave as a stand and put save. Now I have my rsync configured and is here. So let's try to see what data I have in my share folder before I put play. So now to have better understand, I have two, two folders. One is TrueNAS and the other is OpenMediaVal. Here in my OpenMediaVal, where is the data, is completely empty. And here is my TrueNAS. If I come here, I have some pictures here where I create 176 megabytes of data. And here is still empty. So now we're going to come here. We throw in this side and we get the data here. So now we come here in our rsync and put play and we put continue. Then we start to backup and it started to do the backup. In this way, they will copy all the information from one server to another. And once that appears successful, we can check the data in our TrueNAS and our data in our OpenMediaVal and see if this data match. Now exactly a copy for the TrueNAS data appear in my OpenMediaVal. In this way, all the data that's here, it's copied here. Only way that I can recover all this data here back to my server is to do a pull. In this way, they will pull all the information from this server to another one. Only remember that if you save this path, data, photos, once that they will try to recover, they will find as a data photos. So take care how you configure this pool because otherwise it will not work as you expect. It's really important you do this one as a backup. In this way, all the data that's here, if perhaps has been lost, deleted, or encrypted, you still have a second copy local on your network that you can only recover and return in the same stage that was before. So if this video, you can understand that uh, using rsync is not only restricted to TrueNAS, TrueNAS. You can use it with different systems. One side, the TrueNAS, the other side, you can have OpenMediaVal, the same way that we did in this video, or any Linux or any program or, or any system that uh, do run rsync. In this way, you can create a model in one server and transfer all this data either pull or push, depending on what your needs, to the other server. So if you like this video and think that was interesting, don't forget to leave your like, consider to subscribe for the channel and see you next time.